This table represents what we call the standard normal distribution table, or sometimes called the Z table. So let's briefly go over once again how we use this table. The first thing to note is that there's a whole bunch of numbers within the table. So these numbers represent this shaded area in the diagram. So in other words, these numbers represent probabilities. They are in fact the area between zero and a particular Z1 value that you would calculate. So to look up this Z1 value, we see Z1 over here, we simply go down the column and across the top of the page to look up the Z value. Now importantly, notice that across the top here, it's only to the, it gives the second decimal place. So when we try to use the Z table in this course, we need to make sure that Z is rounded to two decimal place to be able to look up this table. So for instance, if Z is calculated to be some specific value, which is called Z1, let's say Z1 is equal to 1.51. So the way we'd use the table is to come down the column here to 1.5. That gives us the first decimal place. And if we want 1.51, we'd go across to this second column because the 01 gives us the second decimal place. So if we intersect 1.51, we end up hitting this number, which is 0 0.4345. So 4345 represents this shaded area in the diagram, the area between 0 and the particular value of Z we calculate, or Z1. So 0 0.435 is the probability that Z is between 0 and 1.51. So that's typically how we use the Z table to find the probability between two values. Now, importantly, just note that this particular table is quite simply just a tool to help make our life simple. We need to be aware that the area to the right of the mean is 0 0.5 and the area to the left of the mean is 0 0.5. In other words, the total area under the curve is 1 because this particular function is what we call a prob probability density function and that means the total area under the curve is 1. So, for instance, if we did want to calculate the tail area here, just the white bit, we could do that fairly simply using this Z table tool by recognizing that, okay, this white area must be a half, which would be all the area to the right of the center. And if we subtracted this shaded area, a half minus the shaded area must give us this little tiny white area here. Similarly, if we wanted to know the values of Z that would be less than Z1 all the way back to minus infinity, what's the probability of getting one of those Z values? We'd have to recognize this large white area on this side is a half. So if we did a half plus the shaded area, that would give us a number bigger than a half, and that would represent the probability of any Z value being less than Z1. So we really do have to use this table just to get this shaded area in here and then think, well, what is the area that I'm actually after? So that's how we typically use the Z table to calculate probabilities. And we can also use the Z table in reverse, but I've shown that on a separate video.